This video depicts topics of violence, murder, and death, and is not suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Saint Ephraim, the Syrian, also known as Ephraim, or Ephraim of Edessa, or Ephraim, was a prominent Christian theologian, hymnographer, and ascetic of the 4th century. He is revered as a saint by various Christian traditions, including in the Orthodox Church, the Oriental Orthodox Church, the Catholic Church, and the Church of the East. Contributions to Christian theology, particularly through his hymns and writings, have earned the, the title of the Harp of the Spirit. Ephraim was born around 306 AD in Nisibis, modern-day Nisibin in Turkey, then part of the Roman Empire. Little is known about his family background. Some sources suggest that he was born into a Christian family, while others imply that he was converted to Christianity during his youth. Ephraim received a thorough education which was likely influenced by both Christian and classical learning. His writings indicate familiarity with both spiritual texts and the broader intellectual currents of his time. Ephraim began his public ministry in Nisibis, where he became a deacon and a teacher. He was known for his rigorous asceticism, profound piety, and dedication to teaching. During the Roman-Persian Wars, Ephraim played a significant role in defending the Christian faith in Nisibis, which was under threat from Persian forces. His hymns and writings from this period reflect the city's struggles and his theological reflections on suffering and divine providence. In 363, Nimbus fell to the Persians, leading Ephraim to relocate to Edessa, modern-day Silifora, in Turkey. In Edessa, Ephraim continued his ministry, teachings, writings, and composing hymns. He founded a theological school, which became an important Christian center for learning. His efforts significantly influenced the spread of Christianity in the region. Ephraim's theological writings include commentaries on the Old and New Testaments, homilies, polemical works against heresies such as Arianism, Manichaeism, and Mari sorry, Marcinosm. Ephraim is best known for his hymns, which were composed in the Syriac language. These hymns are rich in theological content and were designed to be both educational and devotional. His hymns often used poetic imagery, metaphors, making complex theological ideas accessible to the broader Christian community. Ephraim's hymns are categorized into madeshkris, teaching songs, and memories, metrical homilies. The Madresh were particularly influential in shaping the liturgical and theological traditions of the Syriac-speaking churches. Throughout his life, Hephrem was known for his aesthetic lifestyle. He practiced celibacy, living simply, and dedicated himself to prayer and fasting. Ephraim passed away in Edessa around 373, likely due to the plague that struck the city. He spent his final days ministering to the sick and poor. Ephraim's writings and hymns have had a lasting impact on Christian theology, particularly during and within the Syriac tradition. His works were translated into Greek, Latin, and other languages, spreading his influence beyond the Syriac-speaking world. St. Ephraim's feast day is celebrated on different dates in various Christian traditions. The Roman Catholic Church 
it celebrates it on June 9th, while the Eastern Orthodox Church commemorates him on January 28th. In 1920, Pope Benedict XV declared Ephraim a doctor of the church, recognizing his significant contributions to Christian theology and spirituality. Saint Ephraim the Syrian remains a towering figure in early Christian history. His hymns and theological writings continue to inspire and instruct Christians around and across various traditions in the world. His commitment to faith, rigorous asceticism, and profound theological insights have solidified his place as one of the most revered saints in Christianity. Saint Ephraim the Syrian has been depicted in Christian iconography across various traditions, especially in Eastern Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, and Roman Catholic art. His iconography typically reflects his role as a theologian, hymnographer, and aesthetic. Here's a brief look at the iconography of Saint Ephraim with specific artistic examples. Saint Ephraim is often depicted as an older man with long grey beard, signifying wisdom and his advanced age at the time of his passing. He is usually shown with a serene and contemplative expression. His attire often includes the traditional monastic habit, typically a simple tunic and a mantle, reflecting his ascetic lifestyle. He sometimes is also depicted wearing a cowl, a hooded garment associated with monasticism. Ephraim is frequently showed holding a scroll or book symbolizing his extensive writings and contributions to Christian literature, especially in his hymns and theological works. Sometimes he is depicted with a cross, emphasizing his role as a deacon and his commitment to the Christian faith. He's often shown with a quill or pen, which signifies his work as a writer and hymnographer. A lyre or harp is rarely used, but in some depictions, this symbolizes his title as the harp of the spirit due to his hymnographic contributions. Saint Ephraim with a scroll in the Orthodox icons. This shows him with a portion of one of his hymns or theological texts written on it. The background is often golden, symbolizing divine light, an example that can be seen in the iconography of Mount Athos or traditional Russian iconography. And some icons depict him with the posture of prayer, hands lifted or together, emphasizing his deep spirituality and aesthetic practices. These icons often have a background or of a simple cell or wilderness reflecting his ascetic life. In Coptic iconography, Saint Ephraim might be depicted in a more stylized manner with large expressive eyes and a simpler aesthetic style is often shown in a frontal pose, holding a book or scroll, sometimes surrounded by scenes from his life or hymns. In Western Christian art, particularly during the Renaissance and Baroque periods, Saint Ephraim might be depicted in more elaborate and dramatic styles. An example is Luca Giordano's painting of the saint, where he might be shown in a grand, almost dear theatrical pose with rich colors and detailed drapery. Saint Ephraim is sometimes depicted teaching his disciples or preaching to a crowd. This emphasizes his role as an educator and is emphasized to and is sorry his efforts to defend the Christian faith through his writings and teachings. Reflecting his charitable work, some icons show Ephraim ministering to the sick or poor, highlighting his compassion and service during times of plague or hardship. 
Occasionally, icons may depict scenes inspired by his hymns and theological reflections. These can include symbolic imagery such as angels, heavenly light, and biblical references, illustrating the spiritual and mystical nature of his writings. The iconography of Saint Ephraim the Syrian is rich and varied, reflecting his multifaceted role as a theologian, hymnographer, and ascetic. Whether depicted in the stylized form in the Eastern iconography or the dramatic realism of Western art, Saint Ephraim is consistently portrayed with symbols of wisdom, spirituality, and devotion, honoring his lasting impact on Christian theology and liturgy. Saint Ephraim the Syrian is not widely known for performing miracles in the same way that most other saints are, as his legacy primarily lies in his theological writings and hymns. However, there are a few accounts and traditions that attribute miraculous events to him, reflecting his deep spirituality and the impact of his faith. One of the most noted events in St. Ephraim's life is his ministry during a devastating plague in Edessa around 372 AD. According to tradition, Ephraim played a crucial role in organizing relief efforts for the afflicted. He not only cared for the sick but also encouraged others to assist in relief efforts. His presence and actions during this crisis were seen as divinely inspired acts of compassion and healing, bringing comfort and aid to many suffering people. While specific miracles of healings are not detailed, his leadership and dedication during this time were often regardless at, regarded excuse me, as a miracle of charity and faith. Another account involves the protection of the city of Nisibis during the Roman-Persian conflicts. It is said that through the prayers and intercession of St. Ephraim and the Christian community, Nisibis was miraculously defended against sieges. Ephraim's hymns and prayers were believed to invoke divine protection over the city. While these accounts do not specify particular miraculous events, they emphasize the belief in the power of Ephraim's intercession and the efficacy of his prayers. According to some traditions, Saint Ephraim experienced a vision of heavenly Jerusalem. This mystical experience is described as a public miracle, but rather as a personal revelation that profoundly influenced his spiritual writings. His hymns and theological reflections often conveyed, contain vivid imagery of heavenly realities suggesting an intimate mystical encounter with the divine. After his passing, many people began to report miracles attributed to Saint Ephraim's intercession. Pilgrims visiting his relics and sites associated with his life have claimed miraculous healings and answered prayers. These posthumous miracles have contributed to his veneration and the belief of his powerful intercession. Ephraim's hymns themselves are sometimes regarded as having a miraculous qualities. They were used in liturgical settings to invoke divine blessings and protection. The spiritual depth and theological insight of his hymns have been seen as instruments through which God's grace and truth are conveyed to the faithful. While specific dramatic miracles attributed to Saint Ephraim are not extensively documented, his life and actions have imbued him with a sense of the miraculous through his deep faith, profound writings, and dedicated service to others. 
his influence on Christian theology, liturgy, and spiritual lives of countless individuals can be seen as a testament to the miraculous power of his life, wholly devoted to God. His intercessory powers continue to be invoked by many who seek his aid in times of need. The canonization of St. Ephraim the Syrian is somewhat unique compared to the formal canonization process established in later centuries, especially within the Roman Catholic Church. Since St. Ephraim lived in the 4th century, his recognition as a saint predates the formalized process and would space more on widespread veneration and recognition of his sanctity and contributions to the Christian faith. Here's a brief look at his recognition and the steps leading to his formal acknowledgement as a saint, including specific individuals, dates, and locations involved in the later formal recognition process. After his passing in 373 AD, Ephraim was immediately revered as a saint by the local Christian community due to his profound theological writings, hymns, and exemplary aesthetic life. His followers and students contributed to his teachings and reputation as a holy man grew rapidly in Edessa, The veneration of St. Ephraim spread widely due to his influential writings, hymns, which were used in liturgical practices in the 4th and 5th century throughout the Syriac-speaking Christian world, including some parts of Rome and Persian empires. On October 5th, 1920, Pope Benedict XV declared St. Ephraim a doctor of the church. This title is given to saints who have made significant contributions to theology or doctrine throughout their research, study, or writings. The formal declaration in Vatican City ac excuse me, acknowledged Ephraim's impact on Christian theology and hymnography. Different traditions establish feast day to commemorate St. Ephraim. The Roman Catholic Church celebrates his feast day on June 9th, while the Eastern Orthodox Church commemorates him on June tw sorry, January 28th, and other dates are observed in different traditions throughout the global Christian communities. In the Eastern Orthodox and Oriental Orthodox tradition, the process of recognizing saints did not follow a formal canonization process as the Roman Catholic Church did. Instead, it was based on popular veneration and acknowledgement of a person's holiness by the church community and ecclesiastical authorities. Ephraim's sanctity was recognized through his early writings, hymns, and the impact of his life during the 4th and 5th centuries. His veneration spread naturally as his works were disseminated and used in liturgical practices in Edessa and the broader Syriac-speaking regions. And of course, it was done by the local bishops and church communities as it was being passed on. St. Ephraim's the Syrian's canonization is a result of a widespread and enduring veneration rather than a single formal process. His immediate recognition as a saint by the local Christian community, the spread of the influential of his influence, excuse me, through his writings and formal acknowledgement by the Roman Catholic Church in 1920 as a doctor of the church, all contributed to his recognition as a saint. The process involved various individuals, locations, and events reflecting the organic and widespread nature of his veneration. 
Jacob of Sarag from 451 to 521, for example, was a prominent Syriac poet and theologian, wrote extensively about Ephraim, further promoted his veneration and emphasizing his theological and spiritual legacy. Over the centuries, various liturgical texts and traditions incorporated Ephraim's hymns and write-ins solidifying his status as a significant Christian figure in liturgy and theology in the Roman and Byzantine liturgical traditions.